Hello, in this video we'll talk about the thyroid hormone secretion. So let's get a quick overview of the thyroid hormone and then we would go to the nitty gritty details. So the thyroid hormone is produced by the thyroid gland which is composed of two lobes which are located in the either side of the trachea and they are connected by a thin connective tissue flap known as isthmus. Thyroid hormones that means the triiodothyronine T3 or tetraiodothyronine or thyroxine which is known as T4 has a multitude of functions. For example, thyroid hormones regulate basal metabolic rate, they can regulate erythropoiesis, they regulate metabolism of carbohydrate, fat and proteins. They are also involved in maintenance of water and electrolyte balance. Lastly, thyroid hormone derived, thyroid gland derived thyrocalcitonin also regulates blood calcium level. So it plays variety of functions. Now in this particular video, we are not going to delve into the details of functionality of thyroid hormones, but we are going to look at the cellular process by which thyroid hormone is produced inside the thyroid follicles. So here is a cross section of the thyroid gland. You can see inside there are a lot of circular structures which are known as thyroid follicles. So each of these thyroid follicle has a lot of thyroid follicular cells which are cuboidal cells. And these thyroid inside these uh, thyroid follicle there would be a dense substance which is known as colloid. Inside the colloid there are thyroglobulin which are actually precursors of the thyroid hormone. Now let's look at this process in a bit more details. Everything starts from the pituitary. So from the pituitary the TSH hormone would be actually secreted and it would target the thyroid gland. And in the thyroid follicular cell there are a lot of TSH receptors. This TSH receptor and TSH interaction leads to a signaling cascade which ultimately allows um, thyroid thyroglobulin to be processed into a thyroid hormone. But first the thyroid hormone production requires iodine. So iodine has to get into the thyroid thyrocolloid by the help of specific transporters and it is actually co-transported with sodium. So this iodine is now moving into the colloid and inside the colloid with the help of the enzyme thyroperoxidase and, hydrox uh, and uh, hydrogen peroxide the iodine would be now converted to a molecular form or I2 form. Now let's zoom into these thyroid follicular cell to understand the process better. So the thyroglobulin is actually a chain of tyrosine molecules because thyroid hormones are actually tyrosine derivatives. So this chain is actually secreted via the cellular secretory uh, machinery. So it goes from ER to the Golgi and from the Golgi it takes the cellular excretory route and then ultimately it is released in the colloid. Inside the colloid this particular uh, thyroglobulin would be further processed and one of the important procedure that it would undergo is called iodination. So let's look at that procedure in a bit more details. There could be iodination in one particular location. It would lead to production of monoiodotyrosine. So it's basically iodination of the tyrosine uh, moieties here. Then there could be diiodotyrosine and all of these elements can be linked to each other in permutation and combination. For example, so diiodotyrosine and monoiodotyrosine that means MIT and DIT can combine with each other to form T3 whereas two uh, diiodotyrosine can actually form T4. Now all of these things are still linked in a chain and in this immature thyroglobulin format. Now this immature thyroglobulin would actually be taken inside the uh, thyroid follicular cells. Now the biggest in, uh, fact about thyroid hormones are the thyroid gland is usually storing these kind of hormones in a uh, precursor format for a very long time. That's pretty unusual about thyroid hormones thyroid gland and thyroid hormones. Now let's say there is a need of secretion of thyroid hormone. So these thyroglobulin which are kind of iodinated this would be again uh, uptaken by the thyroid follicular cell by the process of pinocytosis. 
So there, are, there would be pinocytotic vesicles taking inside this thyroglobulin. Once the thyroglobulin is inside, it would be further processed by specific mechanisms such as the lysosomal proteases would cleave and chop off all these uh, tyrosine residue from this chain and free them to be secreted into the bloodstream. Now inside the bloodstream, these hormones are not alone. Very small fraction of them are freely uh, moving around, but the large fraction is actually complexed with carriers such as uh, mammalian specific TBG, albumin or transthyretin. And they are complexed with this carrier and thereby they are delivered to the location where they are required. So I hope this particular video describes the process of thyroid hormone production and secretion of the thyroid hormone. I hope this is interesting. Other videos would describe how thyroid hormone actually works at a molecular level. Uh, click on the video in the i button. There are also going to be videos which talk about the thyroid hormone function and overall diseases associated with uh, thyroid hormones. So stay tuned for more. By the way, all the notes associated with these topics are available in my Facebook page. The link is provided in the description. So check it out. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support my channel in the Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, you can support me by, uh, uh, via Bhim UPI app. And as usual, I'm also present in an academy, which is India's biggest learning platform. If you wish to connect to me in social media, feel free to connect. I'm present in all the social media. All the links are provided in the description, though. Thank you.